Let's learn about factoring by grouping. Uh-oh, here they come, said seven. This could be a problem, said one. On our agenda, we're gonna talk about terms versus factors. We'll learn about the greatest common factor. And then when we look at factoring by grouping, we're gonna talk about when can we do it, how do we do it, and why do we do it. Let's get ready, grab your notebook, pencil, and calculator, and let's do some math. Let's just start with straight numbers. Think about the number six. So six could be two plus two plus two. But if I think about multiplication, it could be two times three. So two times three, these are called factors. They are factors of six, one times six are also factors. But two plus two plus two, we can think of these as terms. Terms are separated by addition signs or multiplication subtraction signs, but factoring is multiplication. Remember GCF, what is it? It's the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor is abbreviated GCF, and it's a way of asking yourself, what do they have in common? Maybe they have some numbers in common, maybe they have some variables in common. So let's look at our first example, 5x plus 10, and we're going to try to factor it. In this case, we can factor out a GCF. They both have a five in common. So if I am factoring out a five, that means I'm really dividing everything by five. So when I factor out a five, I write the five, I open up parentheses, and I see what's left over for each term. There's two terms here, this is a binomial, so there should go two terms into my parentheses. So 5x with a 5 factored out means 5x divided by 5, which is x. 10 divided by 5 is positive 2, and that is now in factored form. In the white example, it was being added. In the red example, it's now being multiplied 5 times this. So this is factored form. Let's look at this. Here we have an example of a cubic trinomial. We have three terms. So first thing I wanna ask is, do they have anything in common, all three terms? Yes, I can see they're all divisible by two and they all have an X. So my GCF here is two X. So I'm going to factor out a two X and think about what's left over. Well, I had three X's, so X cubed divided by an X or X cubed take out an X is an X squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2, x squared divided by x is x. I had 8x, I divided out a 2x, which means I'm just left with 4. And now this is in factored form because I factored out the GCF. Let's look at factor by grouping. And when can we factor by grouping? We can factor by grouping when we have four terms. Four terms, that's going to allow us to make two groups. These are the four examples that we're going to be looking at. You can see they all have plus minus signs. They are all in standard form already. These happen to be all cubic polynomials with four terms. So let's take our first example, example three. Factor by grouping in the name tells us that we should group. So I'm gonna draw a little arch underneath of these because we're going to group into groups of two. And now we'll think of them as two smaller problems. I'm going to take out the GCF of each group. So in the first two, I can take out an X squared. When I take out an X squared from the X cubed, I have X left minus a two, because I took away all those X's. In the second group, I can see that they have a four in common. So I'm gonna factor out a positive four. I open up my parentheses, four X divided by four is X, eight divided by four is negative two. What do you notice? Hopefully you notice that your parentheses are the same. They have to be the same. That's what we're going for. If they're not the same, um, usually check your second set, check the signs, check the numbers, make sure you factored out everything. So we've gone from four terms here to two terms here. I know it looks kind of big, but this is one whole term and this is one whole term because there's only one plus sign in the middle. So we have two terms. So out of those two terms, they each have something in common. They have the parentheses in common, and that's why those parentheses need to stay the same. So if I factor out a GCF, that's the same thing. That means I'm now factoring out X minus two. 
whatever's left, in this case the x squared and the plus 4, goes in the other set of parentheses. I factor it out an x plus minus 2 from the first box, that means I have an x squared left, and I factor out an x minus 2 from the second box, that means I have a plus 4 left. And that is the correct factored form. So again, I had four terms. I grouped the first two and grouped the last two. I factored the GCF out. Then the parentheses had to be the same so that I could factor out the parentheses as a GCF. And my final is a multiplication. Let's write these steps out. I'd like you to pause and write those all out. First step, we grouped the first. We factored out the GCF. Our parentheses had to be exactly the same so that we could then factor that out. And factored form is what is going to be parentheses times parentheses, maybe a third set of parentheses. I'd like you to pause and try this example. I've left the steps there for you to read. It is already in standard form, so you're ready to start factoring. Okay, I'm going to factor this, so I'm going to group the first two and group the last two. Um, looking at my numbers 5 and 2, they don't have a number in common, but they do have the variable in common. So I'm going to factor out an x squared. That leaves behind a 5 and an x. If I had 2x squared, and I'm factoring out an x squared, that means I have a 2 left, and I'm going to keep the same sign. In my second grouping, I can take out a 5. I'm going to take out a positive 5, and that leaves behind 5x. 10 divided by 5 is 2 with a subtraction sign. Take a look, my parentheses are exactly the same, so I'm going to factor that out as my GCF. And the stuff that's left behind goes in the other set of parentheses, and I have now factored that from a cubic um, polynomial to factored form. Let's try this one. So I have four terms. I'm going to factor by grouping, so I'm going to group the first two and the last two, and I'm going to take out the GCF. The first one, they have an x squared in common. When I use my first term and I divide by x squared, I get a 2x left. Be careful. Some kids are tempted to close that because they say, oh, I had an x squared and I took an x squared out. Nope, we can't close that right there. We need to, if it's a binomial, in the parentheses needs to be a binomial. And remember that x squared divided by x squared is 1, not 0. So it doesn't go away, and we have our subtraction sign. When I look at the second group, it looks like I can take out a 3. I'm not going to put a sign there right yet. I'm going to do 2x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And I know from my first set of parentheses that I want this to be a subtraction. So if this has to be a subtraction, then that means I really should have factored out a negative 3. Let's just check and, check and make sure it works. Negative 3 times 2x is the negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. So that is true. If you accidentally took out a positive 3 there, you would have a negative 2 and a positive 1, and your parentheses would not look the same. So that's kind of like a self-checking spot within the problem. Now my parentheses are the same, so I'm going to factor those out, 2x minus 1. And then whatever's left over goes back together in the other set of parentheses. And that is in factored form. So why do I need to factor? Well. I'm going to give that to you a little bit later in some later le lessons, but it's going to help us solve. It's going to help us find our x-intercepts a little bit later once we know how to factor. So we did it. Congratulations. We've changed everything from standard form to factored form. Notice standard form. We have all these plus and minuses. We had four terms. Now we have, in this case, we have two factors being multiplied. So this is all multiplication. This is going to be our first type of factoring, but one that we're going to rely on a lot. There's more factoring to come. Good job.